Bonjour, my name is Alice. Welcome back to my channel. As you can tell, I sound a bit sick. I am quite sick. Um, so today I wanted to make a more casual video. I had a ton of requests about making a video on my bookshelf or book recommendations as well. So I'm going to try to combine the two in one video. I'm going to try to channel my Jack Edwards energy, trying to make it as fun and entertaining as possible. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, this is usually where I film my videos um, over here. I'm gonna be very honest with you, I don't buy a lot of books. I know this can be quite misleading, but these are books that were gifted to me, uh, most of them. I usually read books on my Kindle, ebooks, um, so I'll share a little bit of those with you as well at the end of the video. But now let's start with the bookshelf, and we'll start with this section here. I'm so close. <laughs> Okay, let's go. <laughs> I find it so weird. I feel like such a booktuber doing this, but you know, you asked for it, so. Okay, we'll start over here. First of all, I need to show you these two. I found this in Manchester, and how cool is this? Honestly, only keep it for the aesthetic. I haven't even read the content of this thing. That can last so long. Those planes. I'm still doing like the tour of where I live. I live on a little hill. Like they like to do a little tour to have a nice little view of the little hill. And it takes ages. The most annoying thing with those is, I mean, it's fine here, you know, like, I'm in the house, I can wait a little bit. What's really annoying though is then when you're outside, when I'm trying to get a little tan, and they're circling around, and I never know when they can see me or not. Um, yeah, that, that's where it gets really tricky. I found this one in Dublin in a book gallery, not an art gallery, a book gallery. And when I came in, um, first thing I thought was, this is Hipster Wonderland. And then second thing was, this is Alice in Wonderland, really. Um, like, such a cool idea. Love book galleries, do them more. The reason why I bought it, really, was the uh, 129 ways of finding a husband. According to uh, Michael's Women's Magazine in 1958. Sometimes I wish I could just like stick books or magazines on the wall because the aesthetic of the cover is just so so nice. Um, but it would be a bit weird, wouldn't it? I definitely need to be quicker than this if I want to cover everything. Uh, this one, Ocean Wong, uh, On Earth We Are Briefly Gorgeous. It was a book we read for our Patreon book club and I really liked it. I was kind of scared because I'm not a huge fan of poetry and even though this is prose um, it's still very like um, poetic and um, but somehow I really liked it and I would highly recommend it. This is such a cool Tashin book my friend Chloe got me with a bunch of um, surfing aesthetics, ads, book covers um, etc. I always go with them Tashin when I want to buy a present to Someone I know is kind of artsy, but you know, you want to keep it budget friendly and you're not sure if they're gonna like it, so yeah. I bought this one, The White Seahorse. Um, so this is the story of the tempestuous uh, Grania O'Malley, 16th century sea captain and rebel leader. I found it secondhand in a little cafe in Letterfrack uh, in Connemara. And then the lady who was running the cafe kind of talked a bit more about this woman and like how cool she is. And I was like, yeah, I need to read this book. Uh, I haven't read it yet, but I'm very excited to do so. This is a current read. I'm, I usually read several books at the same time. Political Justice by William Godwin. William Godwin was kind of the first um, anarchist thinker. It's the founding text of philosophical anarchism. So Repeater is publishing my book that I'm working on at the moment, and so they kindly sent me a bunch of uh, books. I like all of them, except this one, really. Um, I don't know, Mike Mindfulness by Ronald E. Purser. So basically it's about like mindfulness in the context of capitalism and like uh, new age movements, etc. I felt like it was quite repetitive. Um, so yeah, I'll jump straight to another one by Repeater. This one I loved. I loved it so much. Uh, Oli de Rose, Suburban Socialism or Barbarism. It's a book about how to bring socialism back to uh, rural areas, to conservative areas, and actually reading this book um, kind of motivated me to take part in the representative elections. It's a mix of personal anecdotes, of theory, of practical tips. Um, it's just excellent. Like, I really enjoyed like how he balanced those different things, the personal, the political, the conceptual. I don't know if you can see it, but there's, there's even like a little Bernie Sanders um, on the cover. Super cute. I love this one. Okay, moving on with classics. I'll get the three of them. Jane Austen. Um, Pride and Prejudice, my favourite from her. Oops, sorry. Emma. Oh, which one is my favourite, actually? I really like Emma. Hmm. 
big Jane Austen fan anyway, um, I'll recommend any of her books. I set myself a little challenge when I was in undergrad, I wanted to um, read all classics, English and American classics, uh, throughout the year. I more or less succeeded. Yeah, Austen is definitely one of the authors that I enjoyed reading the most. We also have Wuthering Heights uh, by Emily Bronte. I don't know, it, it's, it's a classic and it makes sense. <laughs> I really need to be quicker than this. Um, the Disconnect. Roshin Kibbard, A Personal Journey Through the Internet, so it's a collection of essays. If you're an internet nerd like me, uh, I guess you are if you're watching YouTube videos, um, you will like it, I'm sure you will like it. I haven't read this bad boy yet. Um, Tariq Goddard, and Nature and Necessity. Tariq is my editor, he's gonna read my book. Um, I started listening to one of his books, such good writing. Um, so yeah, um, no pressure, no pressure, Alice. I'm really excited to read this one, but I'm not gonna lie. The length of it makes it kind of uh, daunting. Look at these ones. I wanted to find old editions of classics I really enjoyed. I found this one, The Catcher in the Rye, but now looking at it, I'm like, oh, he could have done better, Alice. Look at this one. Same, I found it in the little cafe I was talking about earlier um, in Connemara. This is The Great Gatsby. It smells like old books, but like to a level you couldn't even imagine. So this is probably 1962, 63. Um, cool, cool. Building the Commune. Haven't read this one yet. I got it sent by Verso. Verso Books sent me a lot of books and I'm super grateful for it. This book was written by my tutor and it was released um, last year actually on my birthday. So I had to buy it. It's a very interesting book on the African-American community and sports. But more than that, it's about bodies, uh, the politics around bodies. I worked with him for two years. I find him very inspiring, so I'm always uh, happy to recommend his stuff. Okay, I'm getting all the Verso books I have uh, to make it a little bit easier. Oh, that's another one from Repeater actually, Lean Out. It's a response to the book Lean In by Sherry Sandberg, who recently left uh, Facebook, she was CEO over there. Very good book, um, highly recommend, very easy to read. Okay, so we have A Word Without Police by uh, Gio Maher. I haven't read this one yet. We have The End of Policing uh, by Alex S. Vitali. I'm smiling because you might have seen it. Ted Cruz got it out uh, during the hearings of the new justice, oh, I can't remember her name, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, but he got it out, kind of saying like, this is what we teach children in school now, or something like that. Glitch Feminism, recommended it many, many times on the channel. Feminism, digital feminism, etc. Highly recommend. And this one, I marked so many pages on this one, I always go back to it. How to be an anti-capitalist in the 21st century by sociologist Eric Olin Wright. Very, very interesting book. Um, I, what I like the most about it is that the discussion he brought around class, class in the 21st century. Why is it so complex now to talk about class struggle and things like that, but also like um, how to build social movements that aren't just identity-based or class-based, how to connect um, these things to have efficient left-wing social movements. The Guardian said uh, the rare book that can speak to both the faithful and the unconverted. And I think it's very true. Anyone on the political spectrum can read it and get something from it. Quickly gonna show you this one, David Attenborough, Life on Air. I absolutely adore this guy. <laughs> His life is so, so, so interesting. And the book is really cool. Um, there are a few pictures of him. It's a biography. I tend to really like biographies, autobiographies as well. Um, and this one really stood out for me. Another favorite of mine, Paul Oster, 4321. Big book, uh, but super interesting. It's about like how, how to describe it? How futile life could be, can be. How when you're young, especially one little decision can really completely change um, your life really and the direction your life is gonna take. It's mid 20th century America. I don't know why, but I'm always drawn to novels set in mid 20th century America. Another favorite of mine, and I try to find a cool edition for this one as well, Black Boy by Richard Wright. I really don't know what to say about it. It's such a good book, um, such a good book. <sighs> Moving from Wright to Morrison, Toni Morrison. I read it twice because I couldn't understand it the first time I read it. This is the type of book you want to reread every now and then because it's full of very beautiful uh, sentences. Toni Morrison is such a great author and The Bluest Eye is probably my favorite of hers. Last book from Repeater, um, the Repeater book of Harry's so it's a collection of essays meant to redefine what heroes um, are, are supposed to be. Okay, that was the biggest section, now we're going to move on to this one. This section should be quite quick. Um, it's a bit of... god damn it, there's literally dust on top of this book. <laughs> La culture générale pour les nuls. Um, general knowledge for... So this is a collection for dummies, I think it, it's 
it got translated in English as well, this uh, collection. After high school, I wanted to become a judge. So I wanted to go into law. And one of the things you need to be good at was general knowledge of things. And so obviously I bought this book. <laughs> Actually, I got it for free because our county gives us money when we're in high school to buy books and stuff like that. But usually what happens is that the list of places we can buy stuff from with that money is so large that people would usually buy, I don't know, like games or things like that. Um, but I was very serious. I'm a very serious person. And so I decided that I would use that money to buy books for my law degree. So I bought this one. I bought another one, law vocabulary and stuff like that. Um, very serious person. And oh my gosh, you're gonna judge me so bad. But so I was, we, I, we weren't dating. I mean, oh, this is probably the worst uh, relationship of my life, but we were more or less dating, let's say, and we had planned on giving each other presents for Christmas and he had no idea what to gift me. I ended up quitting law to go into English studies and so obviously my law books weren't useful anymore and so I asked him to buy me English studies books. Um, yeah, I'm not even sure I read them. Um, for me, that was very romantic and I very much appreciated him for uh, gifting those to me. We've got The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn here, that's a book I had to study uh, during my degree. Oliver Twist, Charles Dickens as well. Um, oh my god. I feel like I'm gonna get cancelled. I feel like you're gonna think I'm such a weird person. I feel kind of bad because maybe you saw me one way before this video and now you're gonna see me in a totally different way. But basically, this is a... This is a book about... My family, <laughs> my grandmother's family, lawyers, doctors, captains, chief in the army, industrial family. So yeah, I have very capitalist roots. But the thing is that my grandmother didn't marry the right guy. She married the 14th kid of another wealthy family. But being the 14th kid meant that you don't get a lot. They had a pretty modest, some would say working class life, to be honest. And my dad wasn't very good at school, so <laughs> that did not really improve the whole situation, really. But it is quite interesting to come from that background. Because like in this family, obviously, and when we go to family gatherings or things like that, like you can tell that the majority of people there are very bourgeois. Um, they are super wealthy. I find it interesting to um, have grown up in that uh, environment because we definitely got the culture of that environment, but we didn't have as much money as they did. Uh, my mom come from a working class background, so that was very clear for us that we wouldn't have the same lifestyle uh, as them. One of my sister's professors actually talked about them in one of his lectures. And it wasn't very positive because these people were naughty capitalists. Didn't really care about the people. I wonder sometimes if they would be proud of what I do on YouTube. Probably not. <laughs> Aldous Huxley, Brave New World, sci-fi classic. Probably one of the few sci-fi books that I actually enjoy. Not a huge fan of sci-fi. Americana by Shimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I liked how she mixed romance with racial politics, with immigration, with... Uh, the idea of citizenship as well. It's such a great book. Got it from the English Studies Department uh, library and did not give it back. Another book I did not give back to the library <laughs> is American Appetite by Douglas S. Massey and Nancy A. Denton. I used it for my first year math thesis. It's a very important sociology book in uh, Black Studies. It talks about the politics of the ghetto, um, how people are still segregated, um, even in the post-segregation era. I talked a little bit about it in one of my videos and I said that it was basically two sociologists trying to understand the ghetto without really knowing it. I'm not pretending that I know better than them. Uh, it's just that I've read books uh, where people were really engaging with the people in the ghetto. Um, and it felt very different from this one. So another book that would qualify as sci-fi, uh, Never Let Me Go, Kazuo Ishiguro. Jack Edwards recently said that it's one of the books that he'd love to be able to reread for the first time. And I totally get it. It's a very good book. I read it twice, um, actually. If you're not really into sci-fi, I feel like this one could reconcile you with the genre. Was recently said in this one by Daphne, who wrote it. Uh, Made Up, a true story of beauty, culture, and the late capitalism. The house guest found it through uh, Jack Edwards. He was doing a video on celebrities' favorite books, and I think this one was one of Kendall Jenner's favorites. Some compare Empower to Kafka Poe and Shirley Jackson. Let me read you. Empower de Villa's stories are terrifying, mesmerizing, and expertly crafted. You'll finish each one gasping for air. And yeah, I do agree. Versa sent me this one. Um, Go Online, a user manual uh, by Joanna Walsh. 
wasn't expecting it to be like that. Didn't know about Joanna uh, before I read the book. And now I better understand, like, that's, that's really her style. It's very experimental. I don't know if I liked it. I really don't know. I was gifted um, this one for Christmas, The Art of Feminism. It was produced by the Tate, and it's one of those coffee table books, I guess. Um, I do have a few fashion magazines, not that I'm really into fashion, but I just like the aesthetic and, like, the, the, the art around fashion, really. So I have um, this one, Muse. Um, and then I have a bunch of Vogue um, coming from different countries. Every time I would go to a new country, I would buy a Vogue. Um, I don't do it anymore, actually. Um, these two are from a French series called America. It's a political magazine. Oh, actually, let me show you that one. This one was specifically on race. Um, super interesting. The aesthetic is really nice as well. And it had an exclusive text from uh, Mr. James Baldwin. And yeah, maybe I'll show you this one. Mucha Mucha. I never know how to pronounce it. He really inspired the uh, 1960s psychedelic aesthetic. There was an exhibition um, around him in Brittany when I went last year. I love it. I love it so much. He was like the cool guy during the Art Nouveau period. Thank you for still being here. We are almost done. Moving to the last section, which is a smaller one. And then that will be it. Okay, last section. Another current read. Ooh. Oh, damn it. <laughs> this is holding on to nothing, to be honest. Okay, we're good. Uh, Bad Gaze! I love this book so much. You learn so much through this book. I feel like I'm relearning history with a bad gay perspective, which is so cool. Um, very funny as well. Uh, I really like it. Highly, highly recommend this one. Haven't read this one yet. Abolition Geography uh, by Ruth Wilson Gilmore. Essays Towards Liberation. French book, Edouard Louis, Histoire de la Violence. Just realized I'm literally hitting this book and well, whatever. Highly recommend Edouard Louis if you want to read a little bit of French, but I would not recommend this one to start with. I think it's the hardest book I've ever read from him, so classic Suzanne Faludi, Backlash. Favorite, favorite book, uh, Winesburg, Ohio by Anderson. And look at this edition. I think it might be the first edition. I'm not fully sure, but I found it in Go Away. And when I found this one, I was like, what? Wait. Wait. What was it? Six euros! <laughs> I'm buying it! Hopla! The works of Emerson. Um, a bit of a controversial figure, not gonna lie, but such a big thinker. Um, I thought it was quite cool to have like the collection, really. And what? <laughs> I need to stop doing that. But eight euros, come on. Another book that was gifted for me, Pauvre Petit Blanc, uh, Sylvie Laurent. I love this woman. Um, she's so cool. She's a sociologist. I feel like one of those beauty influencers trying to get the focus right, but I literally can't. In Praise of Idleness, I think that's the English title. I used it for my video on I Don't Dream of Labour. Another book I used in one of my videos on home ownership. If you are French or if you understand French, read it. Bell Hooks, that's the French version of, I can't remember the title in English, Tout le monde peut être féministe. As always with Bell Hooks, it's not like groundbreaking, but at the same time, it's the type of book that I would recommend to people who don't know much about feminism, um, men, for example. This French publishing house always does like the best book covers. Des Vies de Combat, another French book that I need to read. The Last Neoliberal, I uh, read this one for my video on why I hate my country, talking about France. It's about Macron um, and neoliberalism. Another one from Paul Auster that was gifted last year. Mm, I'm not a fan of this one. Uh, the True Tales of American Life. It's a collection of little stories by uh, random people, but I don't think the book was organized very well because they start with like animals. Not that I don't like animals, but I don't know. Do you really want to start a book with like random people telling stories about their pets? Is it just me? I don't know. <laughs> Got this book for Christmas from my friend Sarah and I loved it. Um, of Women and Salt by Gabriela Garcia. The writing is amazing. I'm gonna try to find a passage that I really, really like. Actually, no, because I forgot to mark the page. That's it, we covered everything. That was a lot. I wasn't expecting it to be that long, but I think we did it. I said I would go through my ebooks on my Kindle, but I feel like this video is already way too long. So maybe I'll do that in another video, we'll see. Nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed this little tour. As you can see, I like to mix a little bit of fiction with non-fiction. Um, that's also what we do on our book club on Patreon. If you want to join, we pick a new book every month. We switch between fiction and non-fiction. And yes, yeah, it's always fun to discuss about the books, to have this sense of accountability as well. So if you want to join, you'll find a link 
in the description box. That's it for today. I'll see you with a proper video essay um, next week, I guess. I wish you a lovely day and I'll see you very soon. Salut!